All right, Peter's answer to the Jews' question, Acts chapter 2, 38, of what they should do relative to Jesus Christ being their Lord and Christ their Messiah, Savior, included being water baptized. But that water baptism, similar to John's, but a little different, but to symbolize and not be part of repentance as some contend, nor to be causative of being forgiven of sins unto eternal life in the eternal kingdom of God. On the other hand, especially here, during the transition to the church age, first century Jews, taking the message of John the, uh, uh, Peter, not John the Baptist, during the church age transition, water baptism for the Jews who believed was to be causative of receiving the gift of the indwelling Holy Spirit. And read this carefully, Acts 2.38. And Peter said to them, plural, repent. It's a plural verb. And let each singular, at least one of you, be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. That's singular after being forgiven. So each one of you get water baptized with the result of, for the forgiveness of your sins is symbolic, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So that's plural as a result of the water baptism. So when Peter answered the question posed by the Jews in Acts 2.37, what shall we do? His answer was, Repent, and let each one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. As with all passages in Scripture, especially those which are crucial to the understanding of the Gospel, such as the cause and effect statement in Acts 2.38, one must examine them in accordance with the normative rules of language, context, and logic in order to establish a meaning, which means dissecting the words a little bit. First of all, the baptism in view cannot be concluded to be part of the repentance as some contend, for the response is repent and let each one of you be baptized, are stipulated as two separate actions to be taken, one not being part of the other. Secondly, the repentance is limited limited by the context of a, to a moment of faith alone in Christ alone for forgiveness of sins, strictly a mental activity, because Peter isn't telling you to turn from your sins. What he's telling you is who Jesus Christ is. Hence, apart from any other kind of human doing, thus excluding water baptism. So in the transition from the period of the law to the economy of Jew and Gentile together together in Christ, the church, the first Jews to be part of the new dispensation of the church, each one was to repent, change his mind to believing in Jesus as Lord and Christ unto forgiveness of sins unto eternal life, whereupon each one of those Jewish believers in the beginning of this period was to be water baptized to symbolize their forgiveness of sins unto eternal life and as a result of that water baptism, it's causative there, they would receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Since baptisms and ceremonial washings from Old Testament times were symbolic of something and not actual, you have some Old Testament passages here in Exodus, Deuteronomy, and also Hebrews. New Testament Greek uh, book, but reflecting a lot of the Old Testament, Hebrews 9, 9 to 10. It was symbolic for the present time in which both gifts and sacrifices are offered, which cannot make him who performed the service perfect in regard to the conscience. Concerned only with foods and drinks, various washings, baptism, and fleshly ordinances imposed upon the time of Reformation. Symbolic. So, One kind of water baptism was a ritual symbolizing conversion to Judaism. Pagans who became proselytes to Judaism would, through self-administered water baptism, make a public demonstration to symbolize their decision to convert to Judaism and identify themselves with the people of God, the people of Israel. So, we digressed a little bit, but these things come up. Got to be ready with an answer. I think we've pretty much covered it all. Good to be repetitive because rep repetition is the art of living, of, of learning. Now, let's go back to baptism. That's what we looked at. The requirement of the Messiah's coming in John the Baptist baptism. Not all believing they had a, had a sin problem, the Pharisees and Sadducees and many others who came to see John the Baptist rejected his preaching and they believed that they, as physical sons of Abraham, were automatically 
qualified for Messiah, Messiah's kingdom. Now, John's water baptism symbolized the Holy Spirit's regeneration of an individual. John's baptism stipulated as a baptism relative to forgiveness of sins also, also, actually also symbolized the Holy Spirit's re regeneration of an individual. Look at Matthew 3, 3 and 6 to 9. This is he who was spoken of through the prophet Isaiah, a voice calling in the desert, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him. Confessing their sins, they, the Jewish people, were baptized by him, John the Baptist, in the river Jordan. But when he saw many Pharisees and Sadducees coming to where he was baptizing, he said to them, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the coming wrath? Produce fruit in keeping with repentance. And do not think you can say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father. I, John the Baptist, tell you that out of these stones, God can raise up children for Abraham. So, passages relative to John's baptism are speaking about the Jewish people who came to John the Baptist in order to come to a point of repentance relative to faith in the coming Messiah for their entrance into the kingdom of God, salvation unto eternal life, and then to a point of confessing their sins, and then to water baptism in the River Jordan. This water baptism in the River Jordan symbolized their condition of having exercised their faith in the coming Messiah unto eternal life in the kingdom of heaven, and having thereby been cleansed of their sins by God the Holy Spirit's action of the washing of regeneration of rebirth. Not the water baptism which symbolized it. Compare Titus 3, 5. He... Christ saved us even in those ancient times through the washing of rebirth and the renewal by the Holy Spirit. That's not a actual, that's an actual baptism and not a symbolic one through water. This washing of rebirth and renewal by God of an individual was the actual Holy Spirit regeneration which an individual symbolized after by afterward by the water baptism performed moments later by John the Baptist. Each of the three wet baptism use water and in each case the water represents something the particular baptism of john the baptist is a representative identification as opposed to an actual one the actual identification can be found in the passage that john the baptist preached here it is the purpose of john the baptist's ministry was to testify to israel as to whom the messiah the lord jesus christ was so that through his testimony about jesus all israel might have the opportunity to believe in Christ unto eternal life. Then would begin the kingdom rule on earth. John 1, 6-7 There came a man who was sent from God. His name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning the light, that light, Jesus Christ, who is the light, the life, the word, so that the truth, so that through him all men might believe. So the purpose of John the Baptist's ministry was to believe, was to testify as to who the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ, is, so that through his testimony about Jesus, all men might have the information of the gospel, of salvation. And then, what do you do with that information? And then have the opportunity to believe in him unto eternal life. John 1, 29-34. The next day John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is the one I meant when I said, A man comes after me, who comes after me has suppressed me, because he was before me in time. In time before me, he's eternal, he's God. I myself did not know him, but the reason I came baptizing with water was that he might be revealed to Israel. Notice that John's water baptism ministry focused on the nation Israel, and John testified that his water baptism had something to do with the revelation to Israel of the Messiah Jesus Christ, and that he was the Lamb of God who takes came to take away the sin of the world. Any message here about turning from sins? No. Then John gave this testimony. I saw the Spirit come down from heaven as a dove and remain on him. I would not have known him except that the one who sent me to baptize with water told me, The man on whom you see the Spirit come down and remain is he who will baptize with the Holy Spirit. Notice the differentiation between baptizing in water and the baptism of the Holy Spirit. One is symbolic and one is real. I have seen and I testify that this is the Son of God. And John's testimony is that Jesus Christ is the Messiah, the Son of God, who came to take away the sins of the world by the sacrifice of his own life. More on this next time.